Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's video tutorial for Reaper, we're going to be taking a look at how we can take live drums and how we can replace those with MIDI drums and how we can mix the two together. That's a very common technique that's used a lot these days where you get a mix that isn't particularly brilliant, the drum sounds a little bit dull, whatever, multiple different reasons why you'd be doing it. But you want to replace that with a higher quality sampled drum, bass drum, snare drum and so on, just to give your mix a little bit more punch, a little bit more clarity to cut through. In this video we're going to be taking a look at some live drums I recorded from a gig recently. And they're a little bit low in the mix, they're not the best sound in the world, so we're going to mix those with the ambient sounds along with our drum samples. We're going to change it over to MIDI so we can tweak and adjust if we need to, and we're going to use Easy Drummer to give us our samples. Now there are multiple ways of doing the same technique. We're going to look at the MIDI method of doing it, but there's ways of using just simple wave samples to replace those, and we'll look at that in a future video. So let's see how we can do that quickly, easily, and with minimal fuss. So right now I've just stripped out all of the extra ambient sounds and everything. I've just got the kick drum and the, the snare drum. So let's just name those a second so we know what we're dealing with. There's our kick and our snare. Okay, so you can see that we've got some typical transients that show us where the kick drum's being hit and where the snare drum's being hit. But what you'll probably also notice is the fact that there's a certain amount of bleed from the snare drum going into the kick drum. So you can see where we've got, let me just turn my snap off, where we've got the snare hit, we've also picked that up in the kick drum mic. So if I play these back together, you'll hear, well actually I'll just play back just the kick drum so you can hear what I'm talking about. So each one of these transients in between that relates to the same position as the snare is picking that up in the kick drum mic. So that's something we need to be aware of when we're looking at resampling this. We want to make sure that when we convert this over to MIDI, we don't take extra information that we don't actually require over. That means we're going to manually have to go through and delete that. It's not difficult, it's quite easy, but it's time consuming. So let's just make it simple from the start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the kick drum track and I'm going to right click choose item processing and I'm going to come down to dynamic split items. I give you the keyboard shortcut of D, obviously if you're using a customized version of Reaper and you would customize your shortcuts that might not be the same as yours, but on a standard installation D will do exactly the same thing. So we'll hit that, that'll open up a dialog box that gives us a load of different parameters we can work with and what you can see is this is now splitting the, uh, the hits that it thinks is correct and what it'll do is it'll split those out for us. Now we can adjust that, we can reduce the amount of splits that are on there, we can control the number of splits, and as we adjust this you can see, if we take a look, as I adjust the settings on here, we get fewer hits, so you can see we're picking up the kick drums, but we're not getting every single one, we're avoiding the snare, but we're also missing some of the kick drums. So we'll just increase that, looking at what we're doing, just to ensure that what we're doing is we're capturing the kick drums, we may pick up the odd snare hit like we've got over here and we can try fine tuning that ever so slightly and you can see that's now taken that out. If I pan across just to have a little check to make sure that everything is as I expect it to be. Now you may find that this gives you 95% accurate, sometimes it's going to give you 100%. Just be aware that you can go in because it's MIDI, you can adjust this and tweak it to your heart's content to make sure you've got everything you want where you want it. So that's looking good to me. We missed a kick drum hit there, so let's just try adjusting that slightly. There's a kind of trade-off between do I want to take out multiple snare hits or am I happy to sort of occasionally put back in a kick drum hit. So let's just go for that. That's close enough, like I say. I can see a couple of beats that are missed. But because we're going to mix this with the actual mics that have been used on the drum kit itself live, we're not always going to miss those in there. We, like I say, we can fine-tune because it's all MIDI. I leave all the other options as they are. I come down to the bottom and ensure that create chromatic MIDI items from slice is selected. By default that won't be selected. So if it isn't, click to select it and we'll just hit split. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a new track, a MIDI track, and it'll take over all these slices and convert those to MIDI hits. So let's just do that. Hit split and there we go. You can see there's our MIDI track and there's all our, our beats 
all set up on there. So let's go and take a look at what it's done for us in the MIDI track. So I open up the MIDI track. You can see what it's done is it's created all the different beats that we wanted, but it's put every single one on its own entry, its own line, which is not what we want. What you can see is we've also picked up the dynamics of our drum, so you can see the hits are very dynamic on there. We've got lots of harder hits, quieter hits, and so on. It's all great. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to load in the predefined names for my drum kit. So I'm going to go to Customize Note Names, and I come down, I'm going to use my Easy Drum and Mini Note Names. So that's just going to make my life a little bit easier when I'm mapping these over. So if I scroll down, what I'm looking for is the kick, which if I click on that, that's, just click it, we take a look at the top, it says B135, which shows up there, so B135. So if I press Control A to select all of our MIDI notes, and then right click on any one of these, and come down to Note Properties, what I can do is I can just tell it that I want all of these notes to go to channel 39, D2, which I know is my kick drum, hit apply, that'll put everything in the right place. So we've now got all our drum beats, our kick drum beats in the right place. And as you can see, we've got quite a range of velocity there. Now, this is entirely up to you, but what I tend to do just to, to level some of that out, because as you can see, this is quite low in the mix, or quite low recording, is make sure I've got everything selected, and I'm either going to bring these up to give them a bit more punch, or what you can do is you can bring these right up to the top so it levels everything out and makes everything equal. Bring those back down to a level that you think, think, kind of think is the, the area you want to be. Then I'm just going to use my Humanize. I'm going to make sure that the timing is left completely off because obviously it's live drums. We don't want this to sort of be out of time and create a really strange effect like an echo effect with the live drums where we use the MIDI. We want everything to be lined up correctly. But I am going to adjust my velocity by, in this instance, about 10 or 11%. And that'll give me enough variation in there to make it still sound human. So we click OK. That's adjusted that. So now if I want to adjust these, everything else will be proportional. So we've got a nice little bit of variance there. We've got everything where we want it to be. So I just close that down. Now what that's done is that's created the MIDI hits, but we haven't actually applied any, any drum kit to that. So I'm just going to go click on my effects, click Add, and I'm going to bring up Easy Drummer. Now this is just the drum sampling that I'm using, or the drum sequence that I use. Uh, I'm going to use the basic kit, but I'm going to change it slightly. I want to come down and I want to choose Roomy Rock. Because we're dealing with a live environment, we want that ambient uh, sort of echo this, this is going to bring in. So it's going to create a little bit more life to it. So if I click, you should hear there's a little bit of, of echo in there, which is what we want. So I'll just shut that down and I'll just solo that a second and we'll just hit play I mapped it to the wrong thing let me just open that back up as you can see I've got that mapped to the wrong thing so I didn't map it to the right area at all so I just select all those control A bring it down to the kick quick and easy so let's try that again so so now we've got our kicks exactly where we want them. So that's just the MIDI. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing now. I'll pause the video, I'll do the same thing for the snare hits, and I'll come back then and show you the two. Okay, so I've done the same now on my snare drum. And just bear in mind we don't have any ambient mics on this, so we're just dealing with the kick and the snare. So we're not going to have the cymbals and the hi-hats and things like that. But let me just minimize the original tracks. So we've just got our MIDI tracks. So if we listen to that now, let's just rewind. So you can hear we've now got a MIDI version of our drum track. So what we can do now is we can mix that through with the original source. So we keep a mix of both the original and the sequenced MIDI drums. So that way you don't lose all life in the track. So all that's left me to do now is clean up the original samples and then we can look at mixing that together to get a nice mix of clean kick drum, clean snare and the actual live drums. We get a nice mix of that. So I'm just going to clean those up just to put it back to the way it was. Then we'll come back and we'll look at how we mix the two together. 
Okay, so I've now got my cleaned up audio. So you can see we're back now with just our kick and snare and our MIDI replacement. We play the track together. You can see we've got a nice mix of the two kits. Let's just mute. Quite a difference. It's a lot more life, sounds a lot more realistic, even though we're not using real drums as it were. So you can easily add the two together, adjust to get a nice mix of exactly what you want. Take the MIDI samples down slightly, just so you give them an underlying sort of kick to give that clarity and cut through the mix. Oh, so you can go in and you can EQ and you can do all the things you'd normally do when you're working with a track. But hopefully what this has done is it's shown you how easy it is to come in, take real drums, to use the split option, to take it out to MIDI and then apply your own MIDI drum tracks to it that you can then mix through and add into the overall track to give you a much better sounding drum kit. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please hit the like and the subscribe buttons below. If you have any comments or feedback on anything we've covered in this video or anything you'd like me to go over again, please, again, put them in the comments below. Or if you've got any new tutorials you'd like to see, any topics covered, leave me a little message below. I'll take a look at what, uh, what you're looking to do and I'll try to create some videos to cover those topics for you. So until next time, take care.